February 18th, 2023. Dear Rachel, Here's something from an article written about the state of the gremlin topic in the British Royal Air Force in 1943. Quote, It is naturally very difficult for a pilot to get a really good look at a gremlin, for gremlins are very elusive and usually hide themselves in the most remote and inaccessible corners of an aircraft. It is, however, now well established that they stand about a foot high when in a fully materialized condition, and are usually clad in green breeches and red jackets, ornamented with neat ruffles. They always wear spats and top hats, although the fleet air arm report a marine species, with web feet and fins on their heels. Oddly enough, Gremlins have no wings and always fly as passengers. Off duty, they are believed to inhabit commodious underground dwellings, with rabbit hole exits near the perimeter tracks of aerodromes, whence they sneak out and board the aircraft when nobody is looking. Certain coastal command pilots have reported that gremlins have tried to board them in mid-air, using seagulls for transportation, but this is not authenticated. Unquote. This article is, of course, satirical. The RAF also used the gremlins in posters to warn pilots and other military personnel of common flight safety hazards. As the folklore of gremlins became popular outside of the RAF in the early 1940s, it was clear that these small creatures were really just the manifestations of mechanical malfunctions, errors in flight design, and pilot stress. In an article by Herbert Griffith written for the Royal Air Force Journal, the satire is at first a bit more subtle. Quote, The two fighter boys who shared the room with me were deep in discussion about them. In my capacity as wing adjutant, it seemed to me that I ought to know everything that was going on, and I asked about the gremlins. They explained them to me as one explains something to a half-witted child, as one explains something that is already perfectly well known to everybody else, without wishing to hurt the half-witted child's feelings. One of the pilots said, Oh, they get out of the clouds and run up your wingtip, the wrong wingtip. The other added, If you're taxiing, they run down the nose of the machine and tip you up and you prang a prop, if nothing worse. Unquote. Griffith then goes on to describe the spandiel, an ice gremlin of high altitudes. And as the article proceeds further, the satire becomes more readily apparent, even including an extensive song describing the appearance of different gremlins and their various forms of mischief, with no lack of sexual innuendo. By the end, he's even employing the term gremlinologist to describe experts on the gremlin topic. Quote, From Gibraltar, pilots of another coastal command squadron send the following report. It is believed that the gremlin found in the neighborhood of the rock is, generally speaking, of the hairy-footed variety with extremely large, rudimentary ears fastened to the head, in the case of the male, by a peculiar scaffolding of gristle about eight feet long. The abdomen is pierced with triangular holes through which the wind whistles when in flight. The report adds that it is very important to ensure that no one enters an aircraft in a gremlin condition, i.e. he must not be seeing gremlins before he is airborne, unquote.
In 1942, Roald Dahl, in collaboration with Walt Disney Studios, published The Gremlins, which was his first children's book before writing such classics as Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and Matilda. Before this time, Dahl served as an RAF pilot and as a spy. He was well aware of the gremlin folklore. Disney also published comics about gremlins, and there was even a Bugs Bunny cartoon in the U.S. the following year. In Falling Hair, Bugs Bunny is quickly driven mad by a brightly adorned gremlin who seems to be half asleep and completely unconcerned about any possible danger. The creature has wings sticking out of their helmet and an airplane rudder on their tail. Towards the end of the cartoon, as he's about to plummet to his doom, Bugs Bunny's heart beats visibly out of his chest with the letters 4F written on it. This is in reference to 4F status, when someone in the military is unfit for service for physical or mental reasons. This theme of mental health tends to run through a lot of the popular depictions of gremlins in this time period. It reminds me of the expression, away with the fairies, which comes from Ireland and Great Britain. Some people, of course, do report being taken away by fairies or other creatures, and some people also report seeing small humanoids and strange things in the sky. Did RAF pilots ever really report seeing gremlins? It would be curious if evidence turned up to support this. Let me know if you are aware of any first-hand accounts of gremlins from RAF pilots. Love, Telesma Blue Orb. P.S. Please see the references in the episode script, which is linked in the description. Please also press the subscribe button for more of my personal diary. Are you looking for more content like this? Check out our long-form podcast, The Earth, at anchor.fm slash the earth, or at my YouTube channel. It is currently on a brief hiatus, but we hope to resume our monthly long-form episodes there soon. We will also be publishing material from the lost archives of the Telismanic Record on our Patreon page that will only be available to patrons at patreon.com slash welcome to the earth. Telesma Blue Orb's Earth Love Diary, copyright 2023, by Telesma Blue Orb and Rachel Nelson. All rights reserved. Good night.